part of this, and uh, I'm going to uh, not use my slides unless I get desperate, uh, but talk to you uh, as best I can in a very direct and straightforward way. First of all, say a few words about my background, because Mark was talking about uh, that. Uh, and before I even begin that, I want to think about what it is we have in common. And I think about us as FOM, Friends of Mark. Uh, and uh, in all of psychiatry today, the most creative person is Mark Gold. Uh, it's he's an extraordinary presence in the field. Uh, and one of the things that he's, aside from being brilliant, which he would deny, he can't deny this. He's got contacts with absolutely everybody in the field on a daily basis. And if you send an email to Mark at 3 a.m., he will respond at 3.15 uh, to this. I've never known anybody like it. Anyway, the Friends of Mark is a great honor to be a part of that. Back on to me quickly. I left NIH after graduating from Harvard Medical School with a single goal, and that was to help people who were in prison. I had worked in a prison, and I was committed to those people. I went to work in the DC Department of Corrections as a psychiatrist and discovered the connection between heroin addiction and crime in the District of Columbia, which was a huge problem to the level of the presidential campaign in 1968. We implemented a heroin treatment program that treated 15,000 DC heroin addicts in three years, reduced the crime rate in the nation's capital by 50% by what we did, and as a consequence of that, I became the White House drug czar and the first head of NIDA. And that hooked me on thinking about the issues broadly. Think about what would make a difference for large numbers of people, and that has been my life ever since. In 1978, when I left the government with my wife, I founded the Institute for Behavior and Health, which is a kind of think tank in drug policy uh, with a goal, single goal of reducing illegal drug use in the United States and around the world. It has no other goal. And we do it by finding good ideas that can make a difference, like we did in DC. And we're interested in collecting ideas, promoting those ideas, evaluating those ideas that will make an impact broadly in the society. So that's, that's the background. Now, I come to the PHPs, which is why I'm here. In the year 2000, I did a reassessment of my professional life with a view to the end being fairly imminent. And I said, what do I want to do? And so my life had been in treatment to kind of, that's where I was, that was the core. And the question was, how good can it be and I was appalled by the definition of the problem as being a relapsing condition and the acceptance as part of the condition of continual relapses. What can you do about that? What can, what can happen? And in my practice, I was treating many physicians and many of them were part of the PHP program. And I became attracted to the, this, what do they do? How do they do that? Because I saw long-term good outcomes. And at ASAM, I, in the American Society of Addiction Medicine, I saw the physicians who had been through that program and what happened to them in their careers going on. And I said, this needs to be done. There had never been a national study of the physicians' health programs. There were isolated studies and they were all positive, but they didn't have the breadth. And so I went to Tom McClellan, who was the dean, is the dean of treatment evaluation in the world, and I said, Tom, you have to join me in doing this. He brought in a small amount of money from Robert Wood Johnson, and we did that first study. 904 physicians from 16 states and looked at what's going on. Now, I'm going to go into that. That has become my mission. And I think about it as a new paradigm. And I'm going to explain it very simply of what it is. Now, that's what I'm going to do now. OK, what do they do? What do the PHPs do? Well, first of all, there's a contract. And the contract says it'll be five years and a no use of alcohol or drugs. You hear that? No use. Five years. It will be monitored. There will be severe consequences for any use. The first use. And the monitoring is uh, mo uh, random. So it can be any day. The physician gets up in the morning and looks 
and the internet or calls the number, and do you test it today? You don't show up, that's a violation. You test positive, that's a violation. They don't test for five drugs, they test for 20 drugs. They test for alcohol with the markers for alcohol. Any use, the, the physician's career stops at that point. May not be reported to the board, but it's out of practice for evaluation, okay. Now what do they do with them once the person signs the contract? They use the very best treatment that there is in the country for those physicians. The physicians have a choice, but they can only choose from a limited menu that the PHP has approved because they know they're good. And they go there, and typically for 30 days, maybe 90 days, a third of them go to intensive outpatient. That's the whole treatment in the five years. Think about that. People say that this is prolonged treatment. It is not prolonged treatment. It is short treatment. It is long monitoring. Please, think clearly about this, uh, what it is that's going on. Okay, it's not just the, the monitoring, it's the, the families are involved. The job site is involved. The PHP is monitoring that person's life for this period of time. And, and the, the, uh, the question of why did they do this? What is, it, what is it that's got this? Why is it so different? I'm going to tell you what I found out when looking at this. It's because so many of the people who are running those PHPs are themselves in recovery. They're able to be tough in a way that most other people haven't got the guts to do because they know that's what it takes. Uh, as Doug Talbot, one of the starters, said, the only way that this can work is with when you've got a two by four and you're prepared to per hit the person on the head. And what Tina said to me, that isn't the whole quote, the rest of the quote says, between the eyes repeatedly. <laughs> okay, no one else had that guts to do that. How did he get that? Because he lived it. He observed it. And he was doing this not to hurt people, but to help them, to save their lives. Now, I'm, I, I, we've had now eight published studies of our PHP study. It's going on right now. A new paper has just been submitted to the American Co uh, Journal of Psychiatry about the psychiatrist in the study. Uh, and we welcome other people to use our data, to publish it. Uh, the, the data is available for people who want to do studies of PHP outcomes. But I want to just give you one statistic that to me captures it so much uh, what it is. And that is that of these physicians with five years of random intensive testing, 78% never had any positive test. Now think about that. Where do you get people with serious drug problems, and we did this for opiate addicts, including those who intravenously object, injected opiates, and this is what the results are. And of those people who are positive, two-thirds of them never had a second positive test. Nobody else sees anything like this. So and Mark, Mark's given me the word here. I've got to come in. I want to say click, what click, I really. Click, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want to just. I don't want to just talk about the PHP. I want to talk about River Men. Okay. Uh, what you're doing is extremely. What we're doing is extremely important for our field because what you're doing. We're doing is de designing a new paradigm. And the key is not treatment. Treatment is an important component. It's the management of the environment in which the decision is made to use and not to use. An unmanaged environment, and that brain is very vulnerable to the relapse. The, ma the, ma the environment it management is what the new paradigm is. And it isn't just doctors. We've got data to show the same thing with methamphetamine addict, recidivist criminal, dropout, high school dropouts. In one year of random testing, 61% never had any positive test. You see anything like that in the criminal justice system, my friends? I don't think so. And most of the rest of them just had one or two in a year of monitoring. And that's because every time there was a positive test and they didn't come in, they went to jail for three days, not for 10 years. But they knew if they used, they were going that day to jail. That's the new paradigm. And it can't be more different than what it is now and what's going on. And it is not about treatment. Treatment is good. Treatment is wonderful. But treatment needs a package 
that manages that environment. And that's what Rivermend is about. And then my last point is this. How do you assess success? How do you know whether you make it? I, I get a sickness in my stomach the way we measure it now. The way we measure it now is we have eight weeks or 10 weeks, and we see did the person cut down their use of alcohol or drugs in that period of time. And if they cut down by 20 or 30%, we have evidence with a capital E that it works. Give me a damn break. What is that evidence of? I don't know, but it's not what I'm interested in, that somebody's cutting down for 12 weeks or something. I want people who are in recovery, who are part of that miracle for years, for life. We followed up the PHP data. Now, we got a preliminary study. What did we find? The physicians are still sober and clean. They're going to meetings. They're grateful for what happened to them. Five years after monitoring stopped. Now, what we got here is new. Monica is key to what we're doing, and Mark is key to what we're doing. Monica has that experience in nephrology, in, uh, in dialysis, that is a terrific model for building out, and Mark's idea of connecting these centers to universities. So we get fellows going through there, and then we have a national data system to show what this new paradigm will do, and that it'll make money. That is extremely important that it make money. Extremely important, because that's the way it'll grow. Anyway, that's my message. I'm on board. I'm excited. This is history. This is the opportunity to take what was happened at Hazleton in 1954 that reinvented drug treatment in this country with a wonderful job and take it to the next level, what I call this new paradigm this team's going to do it, and I'm happy to be on it. Thank you.